paste in. Yeah. Okay. Should, should we start letting leave? people in? Yeah, should I yeah. remove that from my stop sharing now? Just um, so they know it's been five, recorded. Um, I'll let them in now. Okay. Um, and then. Um, she says confidently. Right, don't get that. <laughs> oh, David Beard's attending. That's quite interesting. He's not attended for a while. So, um, transport focus, um, so bus type stuff. Be good. Fantastic. Oh, great. Morning. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Is everybody in? I can't no. see anybody else waiting in the lobby. Um, so you can remove that. Um, just just a quick ask that people mute their um, microphones if they're not speaking as well. Sometimes there's a little bit of interference as well. OK, is that gone? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> OK, we'll make a start. Good, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to uh, this meeting of the Integrated Sustainable Transport Task Force. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm the chair. I'm, I'm Councillor Karen Shaw. Um, I think that we have Nicola on the call today, Nicola said, who is the vice chair. Um, and if I can just briefly um, allow just the officers just to introduce themselves for those of you who aren't familiar with them. Can we start with you, Rose? Good morning, everyone. It's Rose MacArthur. I'm the Director of Transport and Highways at Cheshire West and Chester Council. Nice to see everyone. Christy? Sorry, uh, Christy Little, Transport Manager uh, in Rose's Directorate in Transport and Highways. Uh, we've got Andy. Yeah, good morning. Andy Rayner, Principal Engineer in Highways Commissioning in Rose's Directorate. Thanks, Andy. Um, we've got Sharon. Hi, yeah, Sharon Lowe, um, Cheshire West and Chester Transport in Rose's directorate again. OK, thank you. Is, um, is there anybody else? We've got Roy Roy Newton on the call. I know Roy's not an officer but he of the council, but he may want to just say hello for those of you who don't know him. Well, most certainly. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Roy Newton. I'm the Transport and Investment Director at Cheshire and Warrington Local Enterprise Partnership. Thank you, we, Rob. We may also, Karen, we've been joined by Alex as well, Alex Holt. Oh, um, right, great. So OK, Hi, sorry, Alex. Alex. Oh, that, hello, everybody. Um, Alex Holt from the Public Health Team. I'm the Programme Lead and look after Eat Well, Be Active and Active Travel fits within that portfolio. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so um, if we could just uh, make a start then on the agenda um we we'll first of all do the the minutes of the previous meeting is everybody happy with the minutes of the previous meeting okay yep that's great yep. true and accurate thanks very much um okay so i mean since the last meeting um we we we've, we've been do, we've been doing a little bit of uh, sort of thinking behind the scenes and i've had some conversations with 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 some some of you that are on the call and I hope today that we will address um, some of those niggles about moving forward with a work plan. We've got some suggestions about working groups um, and we obviously want to hear from you as to what your views are on that as well. Um, we're kind of we, we, we 
I think it's fair to say, and Ro Rose, you might you might want to comment on this. It, 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 it you know, it, I think it's fair to say that we we have um, been in a position where we've been waiting for answers on certain funding bids, where we've had movement in the teams, uh, where Rose is shaping her new you know, the new directorate, um, and and we're still in a transition phase. I think it's fair to say, um, and so there have been some challenges. Um, but I hope now, and I, what I hope to get out of today is for everybody to leave the call feeling that we are making progress and that we have got a sense of direction and we know now where what we're working towards even if it even if that plan isn't yet complete but we will have hopefully have made some progress towards it um have i said any have i said anything there you wouldn't want me to say rose is there anything you want to add Oh no, not at all. No, that's great. I think that's um, probably a bit of an understatement. The kind of the movement behind the scenes at the moment is immense. We're sort of really building up sort of ahead of steam in terms of where we're going and the direction of the directorate. Um, trying to bring teams together where there's commonalities, and we've got about six. I think is it Chrissy? Is it six or seven job adverts? Um, going out to market to make sure that we've got that brilliantly um, stocked team of people. So the, the work that we all want to get done and forge forward with, um, we will have some people to be able to do that. So yes, I agree on all points, Karen. Okay, thanks Rose. Um, okay, um, one of the one of the um, next issues that we're going to discuss and I, uh, is the Active Travel uh, Fest proposal. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Stephen Perry and Vanessa Bond, who I think have a short, few slides to share and and a proposal um you'll you'll it, for those of you who aren't aware they have faced some challenges and it, it's my job and the officer's job to try and unstick those those challenges and try to find a way to move forward but if i can just hand over to stephen and then we'll pick up a discussion thereafter thank you stephen thanks, thanks, thanks very much karen and thanks for the positive introduction and it's really nice to know that uh, there's a feeling of momentum that's great thank you for that um, uh, Sharon, can you put up the two or three slides that uh, I sent yeah. you? Thank you. Can you see that? I can indeed. I hope everybody else can. I think most of you know me, Stephen Perry, um, and uh, I'm a very active member of the Chester Cycling Campaign, um, but also used to represent the Active Travel Forum when it existed within the Sustainable Transport Task Force. So that's my background. Um, and the purpose of this short, very short presentation is to just give you a, an update on what's been happening to remind you of what we wanted to achieve and to throw it open to the meeting and what might happen after this meeting to see how we can move things forward. Um, if you could put up the next slide, uh, Sharon, thank you. OK, I'm just going to talk to the words there. Um, and as I say, summarise what's been happening in the last couple of months since we last met. Very much encouraged by the support expressed at the last meeting, Vanessa um, from uh, Prag and I met with senior officers from the local authority uh, with the intention of adding more definition to the organisation structure, roles and responsibilities of the working group. And from then onwards to try to define more clearly the composition, timing and the financing of what we proposed as being our, our at fest event. Uh, these meetings included welcome support from Christy Littler, whom you all know, plus Ian Tordor, who you may not know, he's the, uh, he has hybrid roles, but including events development and a safety advisory role. And essentially, he's the person, amongst other things, that um, makes judgments about what can and cannot happen in the city centre from a practical point of view and from a safety and, and other statutory reasons. Uh, Sarah Collin also joined us. Uh, again, many of you know Sarah uh, in her road safety capacity, but also her ongoing involvement in bike training and um, related activities. Uh, and finally, Jade Makin, um, who uh, Vanessa and I have known for some time uh, as a senior locality officer, basically the links to the community uh, within the authority. These discussions were extremely helpful, uh, not only in explaining in more detail some of the constraints and the statutory requirements, but also some of the liabilities that we might face in managing the proposed events and those things we need to take into account. In making our original proposal to the ISTT, Vanessa and I had assumed, or at least hoped, that the event leadership role would be taken on by the local authority within the context of this group, the ISTT, and that they would thus own the event. 
and that we would give them all the support to make it happen. It was soon explained to us that this would not be possible and we accept and understand that. Um, so our discussions quickly turned to look for what alternative models we could perhaps work on to manage the event. Uh, and in particular, because obviously there's a lot of um, volunteer involvement uh, with its limited capability and capacity, but also limited support from the uh, authority, we felt we really need to look seriously at getting support from a, uh, a professional events manager. <clears throat> Uh, against that background and many other discussions, which I will happy to go into the more, more detail in discussions after this presentation, but uh, a, a, a positive proposal came forward that we may, maybe we should apply for the current round of Space Hive crowdfunding, for which the deadline was imminent, um, but we felt that if we could make a go with that, we might get some initial financing to support the event management engagement. Uh, thus, Vanessa, uh, took the lead with some support for me to pull together an application on behalf of CRAG, the Chester Residents Association Group. Um, and uh, but as we went through the detail, uh, she and to a certain extent her college in CRAG as well realised that being the fund applicant and thus the body that would have to commission support from any external agent was beyond CRAG's remit. Um, both CRAG and the Chester Cycling Campaign are basically membership groups and they don't really have the protected constitution that would be available to, for example, a, a community interest company or, or a charity or other constitutions. Uh, faced with uh, what do we do now, uh, we turn to uh, Nicola um, and had some very fruitful conversations. Nicola said on behalf of marketing, hoping maybe they could pick up the baton from what um, <clears throat> Vanessa had started, again, we got a lot of support from people like Jane in trying to manage this. Um, but the bottom line, it, it all proved too complex to remember the time available. So basically, we withdrew from that application. That application would have given funding in the next two or three months. There is another application round which we could consider <clears throat> later on in the year. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that might just make everything a bit too tight for what we planned. What I haven't said is that early on in our discussions, it was agreed that the September event would be just too soon to manage. Um, and that came out fairly early on, but we're still keeping hopes that we can do something in spring 2023. Uh, and a date has been at least held as a, as a place marker uh, and agreed with Ian Tordoff as a place marker. But for the time being, I have to emphasize we don't actually have a working model that we feel will progress plans at the moment. Um, in, in saying all that, it's a mixture of negative and positive, I suppose, but I would like to register the appreciation that we, we have for the support given by all those mentioned in trying to help and advise us. And we haven't stopped. I mean, we've still been talking to people. We've had positive discussions with University of Chester, with Storyhouse and others who are willing to support our proposals in principle. But without that project leadership, uh, we're a bit stuck, to put it simply. <laughs> Could I have the next slide, please, though? OK, I just want to remind you, because there's a lot of words written and perhaps not much time to digest them about what we mean by AppFest. It's just a label. It could be many things, really. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the primary objective of the proposed event is, or was and still is, to encourage residents of Chester and its suburban areas to walk, cycle or wheel into the city centre. And for them thereby to realise that such means of active travel are real and practical alternatives to getting in a car. It really is that. It's not so much about having a particular event or a particular construction, but suddenly, come on, let's let's encourage people. And I mean, some of you will remember we did things uh, even ten years ago of a similar nature, not on quite such a grand scale, but we did we did have events in the um, in the context of uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 cycle city status that we had. By its nature, the event we have in mind is going to be Chester centric, but as far as possible, we want to feel that residents from other urban areas and from rural communities will be encouraged to support this event, hopefully by the park and ride or park and walk or park and cycle or park and wheel services that are or could in future be available. The other point to emphasize is this push and pull element. Um, they are supportive of each other, they're not conflicting, but the idea is to have attractions in the city centre that would pull people in. 
that will encourage residents to take part in a variety of fun, educational and practical events throughout the day or throughout the morning, maybe or whatever, or throughout the weekend, but throughout the event. And those would to a large extent have to be financed in some way, but certainly managed by quite a lot of individuals to make it work. The push initiatives, I don't want to um, <clears throat> gloss over these, but I think actually the push initiatives are as important and perhaps easier to manage. And the idea that we or perhaps I in particular have in mind is that you know we turn to many people sitting on this meeting today, others that we've known in other processes that we've been involved in, other people we know for other reasons to say, hey, how about encouraging your workmates or your church group or your business group or your school community or whatever why don't we make the event of getting into chester as much fun as being in the city center itself so the making the trip is part of the fun so the balance between those has yet to be defined the push is almost for nothing the pull will cost money uh, the last slide please sir <clears throat> We are struggling, uh, and I think it's helpful to say that to everybody. We still, and I think the we is at least myself and Vanessa, but I think other people that have not much been mentioned, but are supportive of the idea, and indeed those within the authority that have been involved, we still feel it as a goer. And I think those particularly involved feel it, it still represents an exemplary opportunity for the ISCT as a flagship project. It, it seems to so fit perfectly within our terms of reference. It's all about meeting the council's declared objectives. It's not specific to Craig. It's not even specific to the Chester Cycling Campaign. But in order to push things forward and address the things listed there, things that we already had on the first page, really, uh, the first page of this presentation, I'd like to suggest that we invite from the group here present today and others that perhaps couldn't make it today or other people that wouldn't normally fit this meeting but might help to sit down and say, what can we do? Um, and we're proposing that partly to get new ideas, to get some creativity going, but, but also putting it bluntly to test, is this really a good idea? Is it really going to work? Are we committed to doing it? Um, and the workshop might conclude, yep, it's worth doing and we want to push ahead and yeah, we can find that date in, 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 uh, in spring next year, or, or maybe not. Maybe it won't work. Uh, maybe we have to do something different. And specifically then in, in, at this stage of this meeting, but also afterwards, I, I'd like to invite everybody to support this workshop, either as individuals or delegates that they can send along. I mean, what, what could happen in this workshop? I don't know, but maybe, maybe a group of people would be interested in setting up a community interest company to make this happen. Maybe we could find ways in which the local authority could give more support, financial and resources. Maybe. We say, look, you know, if we build, if we take the whole plan and treat it as a bit of a jigsaw and we give a jigsaw piece to a number of people and they take on that jigsaw to prepare, present and deliver, maybe it can work without a massive amount of coordination. Um, there may be other ideas. Maybe we just try for lots of smaller things uh, and uh, step by step get something bigger. But the point is we need your support. Thank you. Sorry, Th thanks, Stephen. Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, I mean, I think I think that you know, officers and and, and senior councillors share the view that we think it's a great idea. Um, I, I do want to understand more about um, the, the the some of the challenges around funding. Um, I, I think probably would definitely be worth having another meeting. Uh, uh, and I support the idea of a workshop to take a problem solving approach to this um and if and, and with your permission i i will invite um uh some of the local ward councillors and also i might uh invite councillor richard beecham as well um who is in as you know is a cabinet member and a chester councillor as well um it seems to me that funding is a child it, it has been one of the challenges um uh but also uh, who's going to take the lead on this now um, to be candid, you know, we have had some challenges with resources in the local authority, but that doesn't mean um, that that we can't support it. It maybe just means that we need to give a little bit uh, or ask a little bit of a lot of different people in, in a team together to, to, to try and support you with this. 
Um, I, I'll stop talking now because I can see there's other hands up and I'll take 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 some some comments from the floor first of all. So can I go to Steve Den Densley? Steve? Thank you um, and thank you for the presentation Stephen. Um, very much want to be involved in the workshop. Um, I would just like to ask if the only obstacle to the uh, the crowdfunding was the legal status of Crag and CCC. Um, if that's the case, we may be able to help there. Um, we're a, a small charity, so we don't have the um, the manpower to actually deliver something like Atfest. Um, but as a strategic partner to help you go through the application for funding, we have charitable status, so we could do that. Um, if you have potential delivery partners in mind that can actually do the uh, the, the groundwork, if you like. Um, so the the offers there, and yeah, very much. Like to be part of that workshop see if we can take this forward brilliant. thanks steve that's brilliant yeah um okay um mike thank you yes thanks for asking <clears throat> as chair of crag um i'm fully supporting the, the initiative but again recognizing limitations and we can't as um stephen has pointed out take the liability and responsibility um, for this on our own so it does require the kind of mechanisms being talked about in the short term, and there is a course uh, in June, from the 15th to the 18th of June, the Green Expo that's being run in the city centre. Um, a, a dinner on Wednesday night, uh, an all day conference on the Thursday, uh, an all day youth conference on the Friday, and stalls along um, Castle Drive, 15th to 18th of June. And certainly that latter part does give a free opportunity because storeholders can exhibit free for the Atfest festival idea to be floated, and at least um, in some ways socialised for people to see what the public think about it. So e even while we're planning for it to happen further ahead, there is an interesting thing we could do to raise the profile and test public opinion. Okay, Th thanks Mike, that's a good suggestion. Um, any other comments? Nicola? Hi, Karen. Just to say, we're hugely supportive of the of the idea and happy to be part of the ongoing discussions. Stephen and Vanessa and I have had numerous discussions about this so far. From Marcus and Cheshire's point of view, it's just a timing issue with the um, deadline for Space Hive and uh, our finance director being on leave, so we just couldn't get it over the line in time. But I think if we can look at things with Steve, or we've got, you know, as Stephen's indicated, we've got people lined up who could do the project delivery, you know, project management of it. And I think it just needs that kind of one sort of person to kind of take a lead and get cracking. So if it's possible, you know, timing wise through another Space Hive application, I think it would be worth looking at, looking at it. We've done, look, Vanessa's done all the work. She's kind of, it's pretty much ready to go, isn't it, Vanessa? So, um, you know, I think if we can, you know, you know use that opportunity that that'll be that'll get over the hurdle of who's the person who just kind of takes that initial lead of making it happen on behalf of the group yeah and um, so i think that's what needs to be done if possible yeah also as well i think what we need to look at is the date again because of course 29th and 30th april we're in purge period so we need to sort of just nudge that back to sort of post-election but yeah otherwise as you say nicola it's 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 it's, it's ready to go uh, it's just finding the right vehicle to get it over the line. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, uh, Vanessa. OK, th thank you. And, and and thank you for all, all those suggestions. Um, Rose, did you want to come back in or have you put your hand down? It, oh. oh, sorry, I'm having terrible or trouble with evening. Teams today. Don't know if you can hear me OK. Yes. Um, I was just I, I, I need to clarify it with Christy um, and, and I haven't done so yet, but I was just wondering whether now we've got um, Active Travel England has been set up as a as a body and um, whether there's an opportunity for us to go to them for one off funding, because actually it fits with all of the priorities that they've put out um, publicly about what they want to do, how they want to act, what they want to fund. And we have things like capability funding um, that's got to be channeled directly into kind of creating a change. Um, but actually it might be worth us saying to Active Travel England, look, we've got this brilliant proposition. Um, what we need is some one-off funding. Think about it as a pilot. It is something that's scalable. It's something that we'd like to do repeatedly. And it might be something that other people within our LEP or other organisations within our LEP might want to, you know, jump on board with as well. Um, 
because that's what the DFT sort of main priority is that you've got to have things that are scalable almost as pilots so other people can listen and learn from. So I think there's an angle there for Christy and I to pick that conversation up. Um, I think, Stephen, I just wanted to say that your presentation was was really clear and really passionate and I'm really grateful for everything that you and everyone, you know, Vanessa and everyone's doing on this. I don't want you to see our sort of lack of ability to sort of confirm funding or resources, anything other than, you know, full support for everything you're putting forward. Um, I, I've just been taking a few notes sort of in this sort of new new world that we're in with Active Travel England and others to to come back to you with some to take that away and have another conversation about funding. And the other group I was just wondering whether we'd approached or spoken to, uh, and I know that they have got a place at the table, but they don't, uh, they're, they're not here, which is Sustrans. And I just wondered whether there was any merit in conversation with them or whether you've tried that route or that's something you'd like me to pick up. Well, perhaps, perhaps I can respond. Th I mean, again, <clears throat> to everybody that's come, thanks for the support. It is appreciated. Um, and in particular, your, your your words, Rose, they really are very important. And I think that you know, if nothing else, the sort of you know the, the ideas that are being shared now. Your last couple of comments, um, Rose, and you know that's what we want this sort of workshop to build build on with with ideas we haven't thought of, in, including people like Sustrans. I mean, I know I know Sustrans quite closely uh, from working with them a lot, and they they are extremely good, but they tend to be a little bit focus on what they want to do rather than others, but that doesn't mean to say we shouldn't try. The only other thing I wanted to mention at this stage is that I think that um, this thing about leadership and financing go hand in hand. And I, I just think that, and I, I'm speaking on behalf of Vanessa and Mike, uh, and maybe in, indeed um, uh, Nicola, but let me say it. Um, I think that the, 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 there's a number of concerns, first about the constitution of the body that makes the application. But I think when you start doing a space high fund, and, and I wasn't as involved as Vanessa, but I understand the detail, you know, you suddenly begin to realize it's you that's applying for the money. It's you that's taking on the responsibility for the contract with the events manager. If that's the if that's the case. And so you almost by default become the person in charge. Um, and I think that's presented a certain degree of anxiety. Well, you know, I'm not sure I've got the time because I'm not sure I've got the capability to do it. So I, I think that that's another thing to overcome. It's, it's hidden within the detail. But it's quite important that somehow we have to make sure that you know, just by somebody coming forward, say, I don't mind doing it. You know, that's some person that, that becomes overwhelmed by a lot more than intended. So I only make that point explicit. I think it has been part of the concern that's expressed by people. OK, thanks, Stephen. Um, I've got Catherine, Catherine Holcroft, and then I'll bring Nicola in after that. Yeah, I was just going to say from a Living Streets perspective, we would definitely be supportive of something like that. I mean, like everyone, of course, it's a lack of resource at the moment, but, you know, funding does help that. And, you know, if, you know, I suppose anybody that wants um, to be a part of it will probably need some sort of funding. But if we were a partner and we could also help with that, you know, to apply for funding, um, we have people, a development team, they can help write bids and things, but of course, um, it would have to be worth their while to be able to do so it's at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, we can also promote things and, um, you know, market it, do, do all the comm side and stuff. Um, we can help where we can, basically. Karen, may I just come in quickly to ask Catherine a yeah. question? Hiya, Catherine. It's brilliant to have you on the call. Um, when you say worth your while, what does that um, sort of? No, no. And it's not. It's not a dig at the comment. It's just. It's going to be really, really interesting to understand that kind of proposition for you. Well, I suppose yeah. If it was going to fund a post, maybe to to do so, you know. So if there was enough funding there that would cover a post, maybe even if it was just a part time post, you know. So um, that you know. With maybe well it, it depends what what it would do but we usually um when we put bids in for other local authorities for example we work with a lot of local authorities across the country um we would we would write the the bid with them um and we would be a partner there but we would deliver the work based on what the local authority wanted us to do and quite often be embedded within that local authority you know just working so, for living streets but kind of contracted to the so, it would be like a partnership for for us then. So say say it was a 
Cheshire West and Chester live in streets and 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 and, and Tony and Vanessa and Stephen and everybody sort of, you know, was we, we were one working team over here and we worked with you and that would be trying to take us to somewhere like um, um, ATE, um, Active Travel England, to bid to them for money and it would be it would be kind of a show of strength to them to say we've got living streets involved we're a combined partnership we're coming at this from a voluntary a local authority um angle and that would be something that we'd work with you on yeah that's right and you know as you know and i know you know the the dft and you know most of is like partnership working so the more partners you can get on board to work together on this the better the the stronger that makes the application that's really positive. Thanks. Yeah, brilliant. We'll definitely follow that that up. Um, Nicola, can I bring you in? Yeah, it was just to respond to Stephen's point about um, the liability, and I think that um, from what my understanding of it, you're just responsible for paying the people that you said you're going to pay as part of the contract, but not necessarily ownership of the whole fe the whole festival because the whole festival is beyond is much bigger than just paying those two elements of it and that we'd already agreed in with the council that the um, council public liability would, you know, cover the, you know, actual delivery of the event. So it's it's not sort of like, I just don't want to put Steve off, basically. It's not just like, um, it's not taking ownership of the whole thing. It's it's more than that. And I, But I think if we can look for wider, you know, coin it in a wider way through Active Travel England, I'm sure they'll be looking for quick wins. You know, they've just been established. They're setting up their team. You know, here's a quick win that we can move on and show that they're delivering within, you know, six months or a year of them being established. So um, I think it would be great to kind of put ourselves in front of them um, at this early stage. Thanks, Nicola. I was going to pick the point up about public liability. Um, thanks for, for answering that. I was sure that the council insurance would cover. I mean, it covers. Yeah, it should cover that. And I'm sure we can double check. But thank you. Um, uh, T T D Swindles. I don't know your first name. Can you? Ah, uh, Callum. Hello. Hi, it's Vanessa. It's, it's actually. Me. Oh, hi. Sorry. <laughs> I can't, I can't see the light down from the deck. Aren't yeah. we here? Um, no, it was just to say thank you, Catherine, for the offer. Um, I mean, I know that Living Streets this week are doing the doing your walk to school scheme. So the idea is that whoever we partner with, we can obviously do some sort of cross marketing as well. Um, you know, we're, we're speaking to so many partners. The will's really there to make this happen. Having had meetings with the University of Chester, with Story House, got another meeting on the 15th of June with them. Um, so lots of exciting stuff planned. So we're working sort of on the basis that it's going to be happening. But obviously, in order to secure the event management consultant, who is primarily going to be doing the sort of the heavy lifting on this, we need to secure that funding. And at the moment, the situation is, well, who, who would she be contracted to? Because it can't be CRAG and it can't be Chester Cycling Campaign. It needs to be something, a legal entity that's suitably ring-fenced. So either a charity, as we mentioned, or, a, or a, um, a community interest company. So if we can bottom that out, you know, we're sort of, um, you know, all the creative ideas are there. Um, the will's there. Um, so, you know, so let's just make it happen, people. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you. Mike, can I bring you in? Yeah, just, just to crystallise it, the public liability insurance is not a big problem. £10 million worth cost you about 250 annual premium. It's when you have an event that's going to cost you, let's say, £40,000, and you've only collected 10, and you look around the table, and there are four of you, and you realise you're up for a fair amount of cash each personally if the event goes ahead because you haven't raised the money, and that tends to crystallise a concern in an organisation like Crag taking on that responsibility. That's why it has to have a, a more solid backing behind it. Otherwise, personally, you are responsible for that money, and that's the real issue we're trying to get over. Mm. OK. Mm -hmm. do, do we... So do we take an action away? I know you've proposed already, Stephen, to, to, to set up a working group, but do, we need a meeting not we need a meeting sooner than four to six weeks, don't we, to try and bottom this out? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean I put the four six weeks as being, you know, giving people time, but but if we use the word workshop rather than working group, and I only make the difference because in a sense we invite every anybody interested to the workshop. Uh and the working group might be a smaller group for practical reasons, but yes, maybe I can liaise with Rose or with um, Sharon or with uh, 
Jess or somebody to, to get some suggestion dates around. And the invitation I would like to suggest goes to all members of the core team. And if the members of the core team want to suggest alternatives that can delegates come in their stead or other people that might be interested. Obviously, you know, we, we can't manage a cast of 100,000, but we can, you know, it, it should be as inclusive as, as we can make it, please. Liaise with me, Steve, and I'll take responsibility okay. for coordinating. OK, thank you. Um, uh, OK, so we'll just need to, I'll, <laughs> I'll touch base with you after this meeting and we can pr perhaps try and sort of talk about a date um, and, 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 and who we want to invite formalise yeah. that. Okay. okay. I take an action to contact Active Travel England using our contacts and loop Catherine. Sorry, Catherine, I know you've got your hand up, but um, Karen, if I take the action to, to get Living Streets ourselves and Active Travel England together to just have that discussion as well. Catherine, does that sound okay with you? Yeah, that sounds great. In fact, uh, apologies, if I missed it, but was there a suggested budget or is that still to be determined? Still, still to be determined, but I think that that you know somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand. I mean, I'm not making the figures up, but I can't validate them totally. It's it's really a, a, an event management role primarily, and then paying for any events that we have to pay for. And we've been a bit more prune about you know some of these people won't necessarily bring a lot of value, but might cost a lot. So uh, it, it's it's all for discussion really, Catherine. But it's not five thousand. It's not a hundred thousand. Right, okay. but yeah, we can follow up on yeah, yeah. and it's all worked. I have an event management background myself anyway, so I can yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, thanks. Come and join us. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate that support. And so I know Vanessa does as well. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Are there any other comments? Um, okay, we've got some two positive actions come out of that discussion, Stephen. I, I hope that moves things forward positively. Um, uh, I'm going to move on to the next item now, um, and this was I think this was requested, and that is the um, it's Andy Rain is going to talk to us talk us through the Gro Groves and the Bridge, and again this is this is a Chester issue, but we will later on in the agenda be talking about some more borough wide issues too for those of you on the call um, who are not from the Chester area. So, Andy, can I hand over to you for this, please? Yeah, sure. Good morning, everyone. Um... As I said earlier, I'm Andy Rayner, so I'm Principal Engineer in Highways Commissioning, which involves our road safety team. So I do the day-to-day -day management of the road safety. Um, Grosvenor Bridge, I'm sure we're all aware of it, so I won't go too much into the background. And I know I've been in contact with a number of you already, but just to give a bit of background to where we are and how we can then move forward. So obviously COVID-19, when it hit 2020, we had the active travel bids. And we looked at the um, Grosvenor Bridge and other ways into Chester. So over the bridge, we did a temporary widening of the footway over Grosvenor Bridge. If you remember, we put some cylinders down, um, cycle lanes on each side of the bridge, and we brought a 20 mile an hour speed limit in on a temporary traffic regulation order basis. In September of 2020, we made that temporary TRO an experimental traffic regulation order. Um, there's various different ways to bring traffic orders in. Experimental is it gives you the opportunity to do the consultation whilst it's in place. That's the that's the major benefit of it. And um, it also allows you to tweak the, t the scheme as you go along. Um, I think one thing bearing in mind with experimental is you can go in hard with the measures and you can reduce them, but you can't make them harsher. If you get me, um, you can tweak it, but you, you can't you can't go harder on it. So we, we the best way is to go in hard and then come come back the other way. Um, September 2020, uh, so November 2020, sorry, um, we tweaked the scheme slightly um, where we took the decision to remove the cylinders. Um, there weren't many left anyway in all reality, and we extended the cycle lanes over the whole of the bridge deck rather than just on, on the approaches. And that's where we are physically as the scheme now. Um, the 20 mile an hour speed limit, the experimental order, we did a speed limit assessment on this during the 18 months. Um, and the mean speeds were over 24 mile an hour. Now, why I say 24 mile an hour is that is our threshold for 20 mile schemes at the moment. We used the basis of the four year program we just did, where we introduced 20 mile an hour speed limits on roads, whether the mean speeds were 24 or less. Um, just as a footnote to that, we are reviewing 
the speed limit policy at the moment. We've got a task, um, a members task group working on that at the moment because the last one was 2013. So we realised that was pre 21 hour speed limit day. So we are looking at bringing in how we assess 21 hour speed limits into the new policy, which is we're into the, about to have the third meeting of the of the, of the task group. Um, but just to give some context of the data we collected during during the before and after the 20 mile speed limit is in 2017 we were looking at around 30,000 vehicles over the bridge uh, with an average speed of 28.9 mile an hour in 2020 during the first lockdown the volumes were down to 22,000 with mean speeds up to 32 and a half mile an hour obviously less traffic less queuing people like to drive a bit faster and then in 2021, during another lockdown, we were down to 16,000 vehicles a day, but the mean speeds were 29.2. So I think the problem we had with the speed limit assessment, and when we go to the police and review it, review the findings with the police, is they're very much of, they like it to look and feel like a 21 hour speed limit. Um, and with the mean speeds being so much higher than 24 mile an hour, that is why the decision was made to remove the expert well the experimental expired and it was reverted back to a 30. Um, I think we could sit and debate whether we're right or wrong on that all day. Where we are now is we want to try and progress this to make the bridge look and feel like that 21 hour so we can have a look at putting another experimental back on. Um, you know we, we realize that 20 is the desirable speed limit across across the bridge. Um, so that experimental expired a couple of months ago. Um, uh, so the current situation is the measures are in place, but the speed limit's back to 30. So going forward, um, as I just alluded to, we realise that we want to put a scheme in that will make a 20 mile hour speed limit more compliant and um, to try and bring those average speeds down to, to more around the 24 mile an hour mark. Because um, we do appreciate your concerns. I mean, I went into Chester in the car on Sunday. I saw a family of four cycling out the city centre over the bridge. Um, so it is being used. I also saw somebody coming on the opposite side of the road in the cycle lane towards me, which is quite off putting, but it goes to show that the cycle lanes are being used. And um, so we want to work with you all to try and um, come up with a scheme that best fits. Um, at the moment, we've had a couple of internal meetings where we've thrashed around ideas and um, nothing's off the table. Um, obviously, we have to work within design parameters, but we're exploring everything we can. Um, we had a productive meeting last week. We're having another one next week where we can work through getting these preliminary designs to a more detailed stage. And we're looking at putting together a workshop with yourselves. We've already been in touch with and anybody else who's interested. I'll drop my email address into the into the chat bar um, after, after this little presentation. Um, anybody got any ideas, put them forward. You know, if we can't do it, we'll tell you why. If we can, that's great for us because you might come up with ideas we don't. It's very much a two way process we want on it. You know, this isn't officers telling you what you're going to have. We, you're the users. You know, we, we want to make this right for everybody. Um, I've had a preliminary meeting with Cheshire Police. Um, the early indications are quite positive, as in, you know, they're not dismissing the 20 mile speed limit. Um, they're very much interested in what measures we're going to put in place to make that compliant. So that's good that they're on the same page as us. Um, so I was suggesting the next couple of weeks I will get back in touch with everybody we've been in touch with. I do apologise for the delay. We were hoping to sort of get a workshop together towards the end of May. Um, I think in realistic it's going to be towards the middle of June because we want to be in a position where we can get it right and come to you with worthwhile proposals, not just a, a, a talking shop of that. This is what we're going to go away and do. We want to make it make it worthwhile for everybody. Um, and the other thing we've done is we put a traffic survey up on there two weeks ago, which will it's uh, gives the most up to date data and um, the traffic flows are creeping up again. There's no restrictions, so uh, it'll give us the most up to date data. We have actually got a permanent site on the Welsh side just at the bridge which needs updating so as part of that we're going to update that so we can constantly have up-to-date data. Um, so that's the current situation we're working on designs as soon as we're in a position to share them we will come back and share, share them with anybody who wants to share them and we're looking at this workshop and um, we'll try and 
limit the numbers so it doesn't become a, a, a massive one where we can't all get round get round table. But if anybody's interested, just give me a shout. I'll put I said I'll put my details in in the chat bar. Um, but just to let you know, we're working with you. We're totally here. We're totally on board with you. We're supportive. We're just trying to do whatever we can to bring in measures that will make a 20 compliance. And that's the reason why it was withdrawn is because it was so far off the scale with the mean speeds of the criteria we worked to previously. Um, if there's any questions, just please put your hand up and uh, I'll answer as best I can. Thanks, Andy. That was a really helpful update. Um, and uh, pleased to see that we are now moving forward, um, having had a little bit of pain over it. Um, so thank you for that. I'm going to bring Cathy Harrington in. Hello, Andy and everyone Hi. else. Um, I just want to say thanks very much for working positively on this and also to express uh, the sentiment that I think this is probably one of the most positive moves that we in 20s Plenty for Chester and in also in the cycling campaign have seen on working with the community over something like this. So just want to say thanks very much. I mean, there's lots of issues to be explored. We all know that, but it's, it's very good. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Cathy. Can I bring John Violet in? Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, John Violet from Cycling UK. Um, and I was a little bit confused, but one thing you said about if anybody's got ideas, are we to present those only at the workshop or beforehand? No, I, I, I know we've had some communication. If you want to send them to me beforehand, that's fine, because we can we could actually work on maybe drafting something up that way. Um, any ideas anybody's got in the meantime, just send them over. And then when we get a workshop, it, it, it'll be a two way thing. I think what I'm conscious of, John, is, is not getting everybody to a workshop and they're saying, here's our ideas and then discount everything else it, it's it's definitely a two-way thing so as and when you know you might you might just be going in one day and something might just flash again it, it comes to me all the time just driving around you know i, I drive around the country and I, I you know shamelessly pick ideas up from other places you know yeah. so yes. yeah as, as and when you got you got me email just so just just drop us a line the um this particular route of course is um one of the what is the most important route for the lc whip or Chester. So in undertaking this um, review of how, how we overcome the problems of Grosvenor Bridge and its restrictions, are you looking at it in terms of how eventually it will become the LC Whip design line through through into Chester? I think so, because I, I remember the, the LC Whip and I remember being in Civic Hall, you know, when we had those meetings. So it's it's mm -hmm. It's, it's that's definitely the intention yes Johnny it's it, we're not just thinking of the, of the short term this is all about the long-term gain of it as well okay Th thanks um Thank yeah and we're going to discuss the LC whip on the next item aren't we so hopefully we'll 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 allay those concerns there um got Stephen Perry and then I'll bring Rose in if that's okay Stephen yeah. just trying to get in yeah thank thank I, I'd like to echo um uh Cathy Harrington's comments say, uh, Andy, it's been really appreciated. Just a couple of questions. I probably wasn't listening carefully, but the figures you gave as the 30K, 22K, was that per day? Per day, per yes. Day. Yeah. yeah, OK, thank you. That's a high volume, isn't it? The second yes, thing yes. is, just, the, the, uh, the, again, to understand the mechanism, uh, whose decision was it or was it inevitable that it had to go back to 30? Is, is, it, is it just because the experiment is stopped so it had to revert or did the police say because it's not meeting the 24 miles you have to change it i think um without it was going a police led decision yeah. wasn't it yeah it, police led yeah i think it, i think it's for everybody involved it's highlighted a few few areas you know and so yeah. I, that's why i mentioned the new speed limit policy we're working on you know it's it's yeah it's um yeah we, we don't go into but it was a, a uh, and i'm sorry i wasn't i wasn't trying to point things i just, no, I was no. just trying to understand because again the other the other thought i have and again it's a for the workshop is that you know i think these flashing light indicators that just remind people of what speed they're doing are so effective and i think with all the benefit of hindsight it might be nice to have had those up during the process because you know people aren't bad people but they just forget uh, you know if the, if the bridge is empty they just go whatever speed they're allowed to go so i think we should bear that in mind for the future no it's quite Thanks. no and i you know i could i can jot that down as one of the proposals yeah. uh, Stephen. that's that's you know it's more than sensible yeah that's Thanks anyway idea. thank you uh, rose can i bring you in there 
Yeah, thanks. That's exactly, Stephen, that's exactly what we, we want back from you all because I think they're hugely effective as well. And, and what I've learned through this process is that speed limits are set on kind of the physical surroundings that people see. And, you know, Cathy will know this better than anybody. Um, you know, it's kind of, do you see streetlights? Are there people, you know, what's with? So it's, it's speed limit setting is, is such a, a strange art, isn't it, Andy? And that's why yeah. this working with the parish councils to kind of explain exactly why settings are as they are and why the speed limit is is attached to that. And so I think those round doors or the flashing lights, you know, they, they are sometimes yeah. reminded if those if that stimulus isn't automatically kind of telling you what speed you, to, you should be going. Um, then, then that they are really, really useful. And I think, you know, Andy's got a long list. He's been workshopping it internally with other road safety officers and other engineers to come up with, you know, absolutely sort of out of the box kind of ideas as well as sort of, you know, probably more grounded in reality ones as well. But everything's welcome on this. We need to throw it all in. The other, the only thing I was going to say, Karen, was what this has done, although, although it's an immediate negative, you know, those being removed um, in, in, you know, we are where we are with them. However, it's been it's been the catalyst for a much stronger, positive and collaborative conversation with the police and ourselves as to why we have things in place and what we want to do. And so, Cathy, you'll be pleased to know that we're now going to hopefully be exploring where this takes us to next from a 20 mile an hour zone. And actually, where do we need to be taking these examples from the Grove and where do they need to be then far reaching to, you know, by the amphitheatre, where have we got that kind of disconnect between pedestrian and vulnerable users, use of the road and, and traffic speeds. And so it's ignited a, com a really healthy conversation, which is far more progressive about where this goes to next. Um, so although for everybody on the call, this was probably a bit of a sucker punch, first of all, you know, when you saw what was happening, it has actually given us the ability to generate a far more proactive conversation about what we need to do more holistically across Cheshire West and Chester and whatever we do in Chester is utterly scalable, <laughs> just as the DFT and HE like it to be for Winsford, for Northwich, for anybody, anywhere else we're thinking about. Yeah, and just to add to that, Rose, and um, it, it, what what anecdotally i've had feedback from where you know there's new housing that's prop cropped up where obviously they wouldn't have been included in the four-year scheme that we did on the 20s because they weren't built then but but obviously that's something that needs to be picked up after the next set of elections and maybe something that will be taken forward there um and that all needs to feed feed into the approach the, the next step what what next i suppose um stephen stephen hughes Ah uh, yes, is Kathy Performer? Is that a, an old hand? Uh, I think um, Kathy, did you yeah. want to come back in? Sorry. No, okay. okay cool. Um. Yeah. No. It's just again a support for the uh, for the 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 live speed monitors, particularly the ones that have the uh, have the faces on. When I'm driving along, my children are like, "Get a smiley face! Get a smiley face!" And so it really does like it really does further change the the um, the behaviour. So yeah, just it just wanted to give more more uh, more backing to that as a, as an idea. Really. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to come back in with anything, Andy, or is, is everybody? No, that's fine. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll put my email address in the chat bar now um, and say all. There's, there's no bad ideas, so if whatever comes to mind, just just forward it on, and we'll we'll definitely consider it. Okay. Th thanks very much, Andy. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to talk about the LC WIP now, the Local Cycling and Walking Infrastructure Plan refresh, and we've got Lucy Lowe on the call from WSP. Is Lucy here? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Hi, Lucy. I've got some slides, so I'll just go down. OK, can you everyone see that OK? Yes, thank you. OK. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to the meeting. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Lucy Lowe, an Associate Transport Planner WSP. I was the project manager for the production of the LC WIP um, back in 2019 and I'm project managing this new commission which is um, a refresh and sense testing of the LC WIP um, to progress schemes to concept design. So I've just got a few slides today to, to talk you through the approach to this study um, and give you an idea of some of the outputs you can expect. Um, so as I mentioned, the, 
we put together the LC WIP in 2019, and and I know a number of you um, on the Active Travel Forum at the time contributed towards that. Um, took part in site visits, site audits with us, stakeholder workshops to to help us create that priori prioritised um, corridors for various towns across the borough where we want to. Um, identify the need for, for future active travel investment and that's what the LCWIP provides um, a long-term infrastructure plan for the borough and um, that obviously went out to public consultation and was adopted early in 2020 so we have that as our basis of desire lines in the borough where we know we would like to prioritise active travel investment So then moving on to this, um, the current commission, um, the, the requirements of the brief were to review the proposals in the LC with against the latest design standards. Since the LC WIP was produced, local transport note 120 came out, and this is the Department for Transport's benchmark in terms of active travel schemes going forward. It really sets the benchmark for, for what we can expect to be um, receiving competitive funding going forward. So it's important for us to review what's in the LC with and make sure um, it aligns to that new um, best practice guidance. So we'll be sense testing um, the LC WIP schemes in terms of their feasibility and deliverability. In terms of feasibility, we're looking at um, any physical constraints. So we're considering land ownership um, wherever possible, trying to design schemes within the highway boundary. So we review, remove the need to buy land and the need for planning. We also are looking at the deliverability. So we're trying to prioritise schemes where um, there's a, an expected strong support in terms of their acceptability and where we feel um, there's, there's good appetite for funding and support. So we'll be progressing prioritised schemes within the LC WIP towards concept design standard. We'll be costing the schemes and this will be a more accurate cost than was in the LC WIP because we've progressed the level of design and we'll be appraising them using um, the Department for Transport's active mode appraisal toolkit. So we're following the best practice guidance again there in, in understanding the schemes value for money. And this really um, places the council in a good position going forward to bid for the funding, knowing that we've got schemes um, to, to a relatively good level of design with confidence in the costs, with confidence in the value for money, and we've, we've got confidence they follow guidance and they're deliverable. And ultimately, we'll, we'll present a prioritised list of, of schemes to deliver over the short, medium and long term. So it, in terms of some of the methodology we're going through to, to prioritise schemes within the LC WIP, we are evaluating the walk ride drive consultation that took place. We're looking at the bus service improvement plan to see how that aligns with active travel corridors. We are looking at the proposed impact of schemes against other modes. So how would that affect highway capacity? How does it affect bus corridors? How would it affect parking in some places? We're also reviewing cross-border and adjacent authorities LC WIPs to see if we can tie in with a, a longer term route across the corridor. We've engaged with key officers in the council um, from all parts, health, regeneration, economy, obviously road safety engineers as well, um, to get their input. We have tested the scheme's compliance against that LTN 120 standard and also using the cycle level of service tool, which is another best practice measure for um, a scheme's performance. And we're 
we're validating all this with the council to agree a short list of schemes that we do progress to concept design. Just got an example here to show you um, how we are sense testing the schemes against LTN 120. Um, we've got schemes that we've been in the LC with where at a high level with um, assumed that there's availability of width to deliver segregated cycle lanes, for example, or where we feel it's a quiet route in terms of traffic and we could um, encourage active travel. We've compared that against the current guidance and stated what that means in LTN 120's terms. We've looked at the traffic along the corridors, we've looked at the speed, and we've identified what scheme, what active travel scheme is desirable to be in place along that route. Um, then we've looked at the width of that corridor to see if we can accommodate that desirable scheme, the best practice scheme along the corridor. Wherever we can, we've progressed with that design. If we can't, we've looked at slight relaxations or looked at the potential to reduce speeds so that we can accommodate active travel. And we've assessed all the schemes against the cycle level of service tool to give us a score. So this has helped us sift out um, any schemes that are undeliverable, unfeasible, and helped us prioritise the areas where we know we've got, um, where we can deliver an LTN 120 compliance scheme. In terms of what to expect um, in terms of the outputs, we have not just um, obviously looked at the, the, the routes on Google or from plans, we've done site visits to validate the available road widths and highway boundary. We've looked at constraints in terms of land ownership, as I've mentioned, um, trying wherever possible to deliver schemes within the highway boundary so the council's in control of that. We have looked at um, utilities along the routes and anywhere where there's um, a need for potentially a costly diversion, we've tried to design that out. Um, obviously that, that will lead to cost and delays. So wherever possible, we're trying to avoid those. In terms of the concept design, that's all in, in CAD and will be available to the council in that design package and also as shape files so it can be used going forward on GIS. The schemes will be designed along the routes, there'll be designs for the junctions and there'll be designs for the typical cross sections of the routes. There'll be a design decision register that documents at every stage uh, the design decisions that have been taken that will be useful for any business case going forward. We've also um, going to be stating the maintenance requirements, clearly the delivery of a, a scheme going forward. The council needs to understand um, any, any ongoing maintenance costs that will be required that are an important part of, of delivering active travel schemes. There'll be the costs will be the appraisal and we're also doing a carbon appraisal so that we're understanding the quantitative carbon benefit of delivering active travel schemes and this carbon appraisal takes in the, the whole life costs as well of the scheme so we are looking at the materials used in that calculation and there'll be a delivery plan um, to provide the council with a pipeline going forward of what could be delivered when, how much it will cost. So those will be the, um, the outputs of the study. That was the slides I had. I don't know if anyone's got any questions. Thanks so much, Lucy. Um, it's really, really positive really positive to see that we've got a pipeline of schemes as funding comes online and we have got some positive news about funding to share in the next item as well so um if i can bring in firstly stephen perry for comment stephen yeah sorry apologies i seem to have a lot of bandwidth at the moment i apologize 
it's good to see that, Lucy. Thank you very much. I've got two questions. One is perhaps easy, one's perhaps hard. Um, where are you in that process at the moment, you know, against the four or five slides that you produced? At what stage are you as of now? At the moment, we, ha we are drafting the designs, um, concept designs, and we're, we're due to share those with the Council for feedback. Um, Okay. The, the second question, which again is meant very constructively, but I, I'm slightly disappointed we haven't had the opportunity to work with you. Uh, I realised from my own working experience that uh, the more people get involved in the process, <laughs> the more time it takes, and therefore, in direct terms, the more costs. But I think that those that, of us that worked with you in the past, and those of us, particularly in the cycling campaign, there's been a lot of work looking at places like Ellesmere Port, Winsford and clearly the whole discussion about Grosvenor Bridge and, of course, all the work we did last year on the, um, the Borton Corridor. Um, I think that's added detail and maybe in certain circumstances slightly question some of our original thinking in the LC WIP. Um, I just want to express that concern and, and as I say, I realise the, con the context in which you're working, but I just feel that it would be nice to have a chance just to put a bit of external or community input into it, because as I say, in both those two or three areas I mentioned, I mean, Elgin Port is right in the middle of our heart, and I'm sure it's Karen's as well. Uh, I just think that um, there's massive opportunity there, and it's all, you know, being a almost brownfield site, I know there are ownership issues on land, but, you know, we've got a one-off opportunity to really get it right in Elgin Port. We've got a, a lot less constraints in the physical environment in Ellis Report and we've also got a lot of money being spent. So I'll just leave the questions an open question. Could we could we perhaps have some involvement? Um is Rose or Christy there to Lucy, do you want because it's a council response? Yes, group. I was yes. gonna say it's it's probably for yeah okay. Christy. I, I, I would certainly support that but I'm not sure how, how that would look and if I could just 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 to you know have the officers back sometimes they have to get the schemes into the DFT straight away and there isn't time to consult uh, and um that's just the way the way the world works and we yeah. would rather do that and get the money um but I mean I don't know if you have anything you want to add there Christy I, th I think only that obviously the the LC it was developed in that sort of collaborative approach in the first place and obviously this piece of work has come along as a result of LTM 120 um, and you know the needs that we need to sort of design check and make sure that we can still fit those um in the, the infrastructure in place with the new standards that we have to meet. So I think from that point of view, we were starting from it, from a, the collaboration that had already taken place. I think there will be opportunities as we go forward to 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 check in with people around the table and with the cycling groups, et cetera, as we go along. Um, but I think the first instance was just making sure that we've got, you know, the right representations from regeneration to understand those sort of draws that may be coming in and the, and the investment and obviously highways engineers etc um so we've got the sort of baseline first but i think there's certainly opportunities that we can bring this work for for forwards to you sorry i'm not making a lot of sense bring it to you sorry yeah and i accept that as i say i, I leave it as an open request I, I do realize these things are complicated and you have all sorts of balanced decisions to make but thanks for the comment OK, I mean, we'll we will take 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 that away as well and think about how I know that we had workshops last time. But again, it, it does does um, depend on um, what what parameters we have to work within as well. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll take that away. Thank you, um, John, John Violet. Oh, thank you, Karen. Um, just going right back to the early stages of the LC WIP development. Um, Sean Trainer told us that the first priority for the Chester area was actually Hull Road uh, corridor from the motorway leading right through into the town centre. And I believe there's been a, a study done on that. Um, but so that from the council's point of view at the time, that was our top priority. And we haven't really heard very much more about that. Is that is that part of the study as well to develop um, the feasibility for the Hull Road? corridor and I've got a few questions really the next one was that the route that actually went into the LC whip uh, for the top what came out to be the top priority for Chester was the Wrexham Road desire line which serves Leach, uh, Saltney and, and the Wrexham Road industrial estate 
Um, that um, was somehow um, transformed into a route to the railway station rather than actually going across Grosvenor Bridge. Um, I, I did talk to Jamie Matthews about it uh, later and uh, he said, you know, when it comes to actually implementing it, it will be the route over Grosvenor Bridge will be the desire line and that, that will be the one that will be looked at. Um, then another point source of come up of late and we talked about deliverability. One of the routes in the LC Whip goes from the railway station um, to Westminster Road. Uh, it's quite well used at the moment, but very shortly after the LC Whip was approved, there was a planning approval for a Marriott Hotel, which didn't include that particular route through there. And Sean Trainer um, told us at the time, he assured us that the council were working with the developers to ensure that route would be maintained. So that's a, another question. Um, and finally, the, the, other, the other area I also have concern for, and I raised this at the time of doing the LC with, the two communities of Winsford and Middlewich are quite large conurbations. They're only about three and a half miles apart. Um, and I don't know if anybody's ever cycled down that particular road, the A54. It's absolutely dreadful. Um, very heavy traffic, lots of HGVs. Um, and I'm quite an experienced cyclist, but I, I, it just puts the fear of God up me when I go cycle down that section. Um, well, I was assured at the time that we don't need to worry about that too much because there's going to be a new road constructed, which would take a lot of the traffic off it. Time has gone by and nothing's happened there. I'm also aware that that particular section of road um, is also going to be bisected by High Speed 2. And I just wonder if that is also something that comes into the thinking about how, how we can use possibly HS2 funding to improve active travel between Middlewich and Winsford. I noticed that the council have used road one in the industrial state at Winsford. They've improved the cycle lanes down there, but they lead into the A54, which is this absolutely dreadful road. So I think there's a need to improve that. But I don't think it features in the LC Whip because it's complicated as well because you've got Winsford in uh, Cheshire West and Middlewich in Cheshire East. So uh, and then we've got HS2 going through as well. So I think it's a one that needs thinking about. I think. OK, John, thanks Sorry, there's a few questions there. That's once, right. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for your comments. Um, if I, if I, I can take the first part, um, Hull Road definitely, cor Corridor definitely is still a priority, but it's sort of, a, it's a regeneration priority as, as, as well as a track that cuts across all areas. So it isn't solely in mm. our back, so to speak. Um, uh, the, the other, the other schemes, um, I, I, I think I was aware of the, um, the, the Marriott Hotel issue. And you know, this is the frustration around planning that, it is quasi judicial, isn't it? And you can go to them and say we want X, Y, and Z, and we don't always get. We might get Y, we might get Z, but we don't always get all of those things. So I hear that, and I know that, um, you know that since that time, uh, uh, the supplementary planning document has been produced, which basically says that we need to prioritise cycling in planning applications, and so they have to have that as a material consideration now um in a, in a planning and and you know there are schemes that i'm aware of i don't want to go into details now where we are having conversations with developers behind the scenes because we're we we're trying to get best value out of those schemes for for our active travel priorities um i'll i'll bring rose in there uh if you want to just comment as well um a54 and hs2 um it's there's a lot of detail to unpack there i don't think we can cover it all there but you might you might i don't know if you want to comment rose Probably HS2, Karen, just to kind yeah. of reassure John, actually. So, John, I'm the lead um, director for for us for HS2 in terms of mitigating the impact, getting us to select committee should we need to get there. There's a vote going to council uh, this week to whether we petition or not. And if we do petition, it means that we get the powers to be able to go back to HS2 to say, you know, look, this isn't good enough. This is not, this is substandard. What you're doing from a vulnerable road user perspective, what you're doing for walking and cycling. So we've got a whole... Um, list of you know top priorities that we want to have that dialogue with HS2 on to kind of get that mitigation and that assurances from them. And um, what's really interesting is that 
those cross-border issues that you talked about, we're, we're really, really lucky to have Cheshire East as such a strong sort of um, agent within the conversations because they've been through this with HS2 for phase one and phase 2A as well. A lady called Hayley Kirkham has fought tooth and nail basically to get that um, mitigation from a, a walking and cycling perspective and she's sort of given us all of that best practice. So I chair a cross-border working group with Warrington, Cheshire East and Cheshire West every two weeks to actually establish what that narrative looks like from a transport and highways perspective and, and that community severance and everything that you've raised there. So there's nothing that you said that we're not aware aware of and and basically if we get the approval from full council to petition then we'll be working up towards a select committee date where we'll be able to take our issues there for assurances of mitigation by hs2 so um that that i can't give you more more, more detail than that but very very aware of everything that you mentioned oh thank you very much rose yes thanks rose um i think we could spend the whole the whole meeting discussing hs2 but let, let's not do that because um there'll be more more, more meetings to follow with that, I'm sure. Uh, can I? Is it is it Vanessa that wants to speak? Vanessa? Sorry. No, it's Tony. We're going to change our title to Ant and Deck, I think. Okay. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, forgive me, because I'm, I'm still relatively new to all this, uh, um, but I'm here representing Crag with Vanessa. So obviously we're kind of Chester focused. Um, and I know that this is a much broader piece of work that covers all the outline areas within the borough as well. Um, but it's kind of linked to what Stephen asked about consultation uh, and how, you know, consultation and engagement will continue. Um, I'm particularly sort of interested around a piece of work that Andy Farrell did um, last year. Andy Farrell produced a paper which was, was um, about how Chester could change and become much more cycle and pedestrian friendly. And we could mitigate uh, traffic within the centre via a kind of... Um, uh, you know, a series of uh, cycling uh, hubs, uh, etc. So I suppose the question was, are you, A, are you aware of that piece of work? Has there sort of been any consultation done or any thinking that embodies that piece of work because it's specifically geared towards cycling and walking and how Chester as a city centre needs to change its mindset if, if we're to move on in the future? Because that particularly affects us as Crag and the residents and what we're striving for very, very much in terms of our agenda, which is the creation of neighbourhoods and, and much more much safer neighbourhoods and, and a real keen encouragement to get people to to live again in the city. Um, so it's a kind of waffling uh, question, this. I'm not expecting a direct answer, but the point is, is one of consultation, as Steve said. Um, once we've joined up all the kind of outline areas and then you think about the city centre and how the city's going to work, at what scale are WSP Commission to look? Is it just a very broad um, series of networks or are we then going to look at a, at a much closer level of detail within the city and how those networks then feed around the streets of the city, for example, and how we move and strive towards achieving what Andy Farrell set out in his document? So it's consultation and scale and kind of joined up thinking. Um, as I say, forgive me that the whole um, uh, LC whip is quite new to me. So that's that's really why I'm asking the question. Sorry. Thank you. Rose, do you want to, because I, I mean, I, I've got some ideas, but I don't want to speak for you. Do you want to respond to that? I wonder whether, Christy, you want to come in first, actually. Um, I suppose it was all, I suppose my most basic comment is that it's all part of a, bit, a jigsaw picture. So obviously the LC whip is active travel. Obviously we've got the local transport plan that fits into that. We need to sort of make sure that we align with the bus service improvement plan and all those other aspects as well. Um, one thing that I've kind of noticed from what John Violet said and from what you're saying, so mentioned to Hall Corridor, the mention on the A54 and the new road scheme that was um, um mentioned was you know these things take time they're obviously in the business case process and and what we have done maybe not so well historically with reference to whole corridor is fit those jigsaw pieces together properly and so i think there's a piece of work that you know rose and i and others have been discussing about making sure we've got the movement strategy for the city correct in order to make sure that we can then build those jigsaw pieces together so we do have those transport hubs we do have the active travel mm -hmm. and the the bus network that sort of supports the city and obviously the borough as a whole um going forward um so that will then probably go into my presentation a little bit in terms of the local transport plan and how we sort of knit all those door to documents together in order to sort of set the framework for investment going forward for which the lc whip was one part of that and there's many others along the uh, along the way as well 
Thanks, Christy. That's, that was a, a hopefully a very thorough response. Re refreshing the local transport strategy is key, isn't it? Um, yeah. and, and also just to flag as well, there's currently a consultation on pedestrianisation in Chester City Centre, which I, th I believe is still open. Um, and obviously, I'm sure Craig have going to be feeding their views into that if they haven't done so already. Um, I am just conscious of time because um, we have overrun a little bit and, and Christy's helpfully given me a segue into her update, um, which is item six. So, Christy, over to you, if that's OK. OK, I did do some slides. Some of this may be repeated from last time, but as you recall, I had to whiz through it <laughs> last time. So. I will try and do it succinctly as I can. I'll just put this on presentation mode. Um, I can't see hands, so if anyone um, has questions, I'll wait to the end or, or shout up. So this was just a bit of an update, really, in terms of where the council's up to. We mentioned the Hellsby Frodsham scheme, which was funded from Tranche 2 funding from DFT last time. So we had to do a bit of a su summary to DFT, so I thought it was useful just to give you a scale of the investment that the council is making in, in active travel at the moment. So that scheme has cost over a million pounds and we only, I say we only, but we received 489,000 from DFT. So considerable match funding from the DFT on that one. Um, we have run over a little bit in terms of COVID delays that Lucy was describing about um, utilities and, and um, you know, spend the electric network connections, things like that, of course, a little bit of delay. So we're looking to complete that by the 17th of June. And then just, you know, anecdotally, we've increased, um, we've improved uh, and introduced a new one new two toucan. We've made improvements on the side road crossings. We've introducing about 1.2 miles of uh, segregate, segregated cycle lanes or cycle way and upgraded LED lighting, 41 columns to LED um, and introduced a speed limit reduction on that road as well to, to make it a little bit more um, ambient to, to, to cycle along. Um, we have good relationships with Helsby High School and we're trying to start a piece of work with them and potentially Sustrans working with some of the feeder schools to utilise that bit of kit that we're putting in. Um, and we've also procured some monitoring. So we're looking at before and after monitoring at the moment. Obviously, it's not fully operational. We're on one side of the carriageway while we complete the other side of the carriageway. Um, so we're monitoring the usage of that at the moment. So we'll be able to bring back statistics uh, and report on that if anyone's interested. Um, just um, in terms of where we are with um, Active Travel England, I mentioned last time it was a new shadow body. Um, and they are scrutinising more, um, our, so that isn't on presentation mode, is it? Um, they are scrutinising our um, investments more rigorously, um, making sure that we comply to LTE on 120 standard um, and taking on board the, the principles of gear change. They're asking for further design assurances on some of our schemes and obviously they have the potential to claw back funding if we don't meet those standards um, and they're looking to focus where there's greatest potential for cycling um, and they've said typically inner city and central areas of towns um, is where they would like us to focus because they consider more bang for your book there um, and obviously they want to invest in areas where there is um, the greatest propensity to um, deliver change to, to, to change people's mood habits um, and I think they've cited 50% in some areas um, you know for, for active modes as part of the journey so that sort of uh, 20 minute neighbourhood and all those aspects come into play on that one as well. Just briefly on screen is the um, a slightly revised version of the scheme we um, submitted to, to DFT uh, and we consulted on in January February 21 um, we received a, a large sort of 67 percent of people were uh, in a, a agreed with the scheme and, and wanted the scheme um, strongly agreed or are agreed um, but the conversations we've had with Active Travel at England have been such that they wanted us to be far more ambitious um, so um, they wanted us to upgrade the junctions and give real priority to pedestrians and cyclists, which is a real positive. But obviously the LTM 120 standards come with a, a slightly higher price tag as well um, and some constraints in terms of, you know, how we could how we could apply that to a historic town such as Norwich or even a, a city centre like uh, Chester, where the, the footways and, and the, the road space is quite constrained. So it gives us a, a few problems to think of. But um you know, obviously great potential that we can um, introduce new active travel mode investment in the cities and towns. Um, 
apologies for my spelling on the last one, uh, but uh, they were looking for uh, potential removal of central reservation and widening of footways um, on the um, Chester Way scheme. Um, so we need to work with Active Travel England more fully uh, to ensure that they do approve the schemes that we're putting forward. So as I said, the, the scheme that I mentioned on the screen just before um, is subject to review um, and I suppose that might come into a working group later on Rose in terms of how we take that forward but just to be mindful that we do have this over the scrutiny of Active Travel England as well to work with so there's the aspect of how that's managed I guess going forward. Um, the national bus strategy um, previous meeting we mentioned that the bus service improvement plan had been submitted and that's true our priority was prior uh, Covid recovery Currently, bus passenger numbers are around about 60% at the moment of what they were pre-COVID. Um, and we were waiting for a national marketing campaign mentioned in the national bus strategy to try and sort of turn around some of those fortunes. Um, we're now at the stage where we have a draft enhanced partnership plan and scheme. Um, and that was made, made is the legal term. So it was made legal on the 18th of April and submitted to government. Um, I'll just quickly raise this. So um, the enhanced partnership plan is our vision. Uh, for delivering our bus service improvement plan and that affects our network um, for the, the bus network in the in the enhanced partnership borough which is our borough um, and the enhanced partnership scheme is how we um, execute that vision um, and the objectives that we set within that uh, we asked for 37 million rb sip and we've just since the last meeting found out that we received a nil settlement um so we've asked government for feedback on that what you know what we didn't you know why why didn't we attract funding what could we have done better um from the operator's point of view which was as i say it was that partnership with the bus service bus service operators in the, in the borough um they've 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 almost said that you know one of ours is you know, our bus service improvement plan is quite um exemplary compared to some of the others that they've seen so that they were really quite you know as as, as uh, upset as we were that we didn't receive any receive any funding for it but we continue to try and um, do what we can with the resources that we have available um, and we're looking to uh, potentially introduce a bus passenger charter with our neighbours across the borough so that uh, passengers have that continuity of, of of service and quality across borders um, just quickly to put on your radar radar that um, we are looking to renew the park and ride contract we need to go through that process at the moment we currently have three sites operational um, park and ride services sim suffering a similar fate to buses in terms of patronage is still in recovery mode at the moment um, we need to review the operating models that we have um, for the park and ride currently we're able to set the fares the frequency the standards etc and there's varying sort of um, there's variations on that in terms of you know what would be best for the uh, authority to be taken forward we need to do soft market testing with the operators to make sure that they're still interested what you know what ideas they've got for the park and ride and we need to you know potentially review the spare capacity that we may have you know could it be applied to other use uses um, and within that we need to do surveys of not just the users of the park and ride but also those that aren't using it what can attract them to use um, the park and ride services going forward um, E-scooter trail, I think I put this slide up last time, but I've just updated it in terms of the Queen's speech. Um, so that was obviously on the 10th of May and there was potential to introduce legislation, legislation uh, on the future of transport in the new parliamentary session. So that could include regulations around legalising the e-scooters, um, which we currently have high, high, higher services from Ginger at the moment, uh, and potentially new powers for local transport authorities to shape and manage rental operations. So that covers e-cycles, uh, pedestrians, uh, pedal cycles, sorry, and e-scooters as well. Um, so I think the information is is largely what we said last time, um, and there's areas within the city where they are more well used, um, Garden Quarter, uh, Whitefriars and Chester Bus Interchange as well, and the railway station uh, continue to be those sort of most popular locations we've said about one in three of people 18 to 39 um, have registered with the app which is really quite positive but probably shows the the market that we're working with with these scooters and then just quickly social prescribing um, we have put a submission into dft and um, that was made on the 29th of april i think um, and we work with colleagues around public health so alex who's on the call today um, so we um, 
submitted to DFT uh, and ask for, uh, I'll move to the next slide, and ask for uh, just over £700,000 over three years um, for social prescribing on active travel modes in Ellesmere Port area. Ellesmere Port was chosen on the basis of health deprivation, etc., cetera, um, as that was one of the parameters that DFT set for it. We're looking to address health inequalities, to improve physical activity, um, and to demonstrate the links from the local growth fund investment that we made in Ellesmere Port area as well, um, and to make that shift, that modal shift, onto more active and sustainable modes. And um, clearly, we want to um, complement the existing social prescribing that's already taking place in Ellesmere Port. Um, just quickly, it's not. Um, we've got five hubs that we put forward um, within various areas. This map is overlaid with the uh, indices of health deprivation. So the sort of purple colour being the um, most deprived to the lighter colour being the least deprived. So we've tried to get something in the heart of Ellesmere Port. We're looking at the um, Brio Leisure Site. We're looking at Rivica. We're looking at the Canal and River Trust National Boat Museum. Uh, Westminster Community Hall and Bridge Community Farm as being sort of um, our hubs that we would potentially work with um, should we be successful. Um, and this is just to indicate what the kind of initiatives we were looking forward in, in that bid are. So cycle loans, maybe to help people to get to work, um, cycle training for children and adults and families, wheels for all, cycle maintenance, improved by cycle parking, and then on the other side of things, um, walking um, walking groups and activities that we can um, help improve people's physical activity and this will potentially be monitored and evaluated by University of Chester so are people's trips to the doctors decreasing because they've got improved health um, is there an impact on mental health are they more confident moving in the streets are they using active modes to get to jobs etc and things like that so a whole raft of monitoring and evaluation that will come behind this as well um, I've not given any of these any justice I'm afraid um, I've kind of whizzed through those but I'm happy to take questions but just my final point was just on the local transport plan which we mentioned before so um, DFT have, have given each local authority a grant to, to look at refreshing um, their local transport plans um, and within that, they have sort of set parameters in terms of making sure that our daughter documents are really entwined within that process. So we've got a bus service improvement plan. We've got our local cycle and walking infrastructure plan, climate emergency response plan, parking strategy. And we need to build in um, decarbonisation. So they want quantifiable carbon reductions in anything we do. So the reference to the LC WIP schemes and the carbon for that is really helpful. It shows we were a bit forward thinking on that one. And um, we have to rewrite our local transport plan by the end of the next parliamentary period. As I said, the grant is for um, building our evidence base, stakeholder engagement, which has obviously been key today as well, um, and commissioning supporting studies. We'll need to potentially um, revisit some of the key performance in indicators that we had in previous local transport plans and assess the sort of data collection that we need to, to, to do going forward. Um, so I'll leave that there. Um, if that's okay, but um, I'm not sure if I'm still slide sharing. But I, so, any questions? Yes, that's I don't know who was first. Sorry. That was a very comprehensive roundup of everything that's happening. Thank you. Um, I'm going to bring Mike in. Yeah, uh, thank you, Christy. A, a conversation I've had with Richard Beecham and Andrew Lewis is that we all recognise that the council is severely constrained on resource, and you can't do everything. Um, equally, within this conversation, time and time again, a really important part of our jigsaw puzzle um, in achieving what we all want is park and ride, an effective park and ride. I please ask you to make sure that park and ride, when we're prioritising, is one of the things that we look at together. And you have partners willing to help you with that. Our park and ride is a failure by comparison with other park and ride um, schemes elsewhere in the country, and you have partners willing to work with you to actually turn that around, please do not go out to tend again on the same basis of what there is now. That doesn't work. We really need to work collectively together to improve it and make it a key part of our success digital puzzle. None of that is a criticism. It's just an honest observation and desire to help. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, I think well, 
we're going to we're going to pick up the working groups that we're to, with, with our ideas and that is for, with part of that um on the bu uh, buses group um but we'll come on to that in the next item and we'll if that's okay um i'm just conscious of time and i know we've run over um i do hear very clearly what you say mike and um, we're, we're as committed to making this better as everybody is um david david beer Thank you. Yeah, I'm David Beer, Senior Manager at uh, Transport Focus, the National Watchdog. Um, just, uh, and thanks for taking us through that, Christy. That's that's really useful to, to understand. Uh, just a couple of questions, if I might. Uh, you mentioned the decarbonisation just on the last slide. Um, the um, background of this, of course, is, de is um, carbon neutral by 2045, I think was the decision. Um, I wonder to what extent you're quantifying um, not just decarbonisation, but also things like how many car journeys it's taking off the road in terms of modal shift. Um, so, for example, I was at the uh, Welsh Government's Transport Performance Board yesterday, and they've done quite a lot of really useful work to quantify things like um, the speed reductions, um, bus fares policy, and, and things like that as to how many um, car journeys each intervention will take off the road so that they can then look at what the target is and plan ahead to see whether those interventions are going to be hitting those targets and having measurement along the way to see how they're progressing. So I think that was quite useful to see. Um, so I wonder to what extent you're able to, to look at that. The other question, if I may, is just in terms of the uh, national bus strategy and uh, yes, commiserate very much in terms of because we being a statutory consultee, we did see your uh, your plans and responded to them. Um, I wonder to what extent some of the packages that are in your plan and scheme are able to be introduced through maybe other funding measures uh, and still able to um, have an effect. Thank you. OK, Brilliant. thanks, David. Um, thanks. Can I just say thanks for that, Karen, if you don't mind. Yeah. David, I'm really pleased you're on the call and it's really, really great to have you here and have your input. Um, I'd love to probe you further about what else feedback we can get from the visa, but I won't. I will wait till that comes formally from the DFT, even though if you want an offline conversation, I put my email in the chat. No, David, I think that first comment that you made about the quantification, uh, the modal shift, the travel demand management, everything, it, it's an area that Christy and I know is, is lacking um, across Cheshire West at the moment, that data collection element, it's not because we don't know it's needed, it's just because at the moment it's it's how do we galvanise and, and who do we put in place to actually get that the, get those counts and what does our pathway to net zero look like and how we're quantifying it and it's it's literally a daily conversation at the moment about what we're doing, how we're going to get there, what we're counting, why we're counting it and what, what, what do we get from it. Mike Garrett, who's on the call, um, I, I've been doing a sort of some sort of random emails recently just trying to see what data we've got and and what we need to do to move that forward with our insights and intelligent group intelligence groups so i'm absolutely of the same mindset as you that that's critically important and and we know that and, and we just need to do more about it and um, i think that's a really really interesting comment to make a, and i just want to assure you that we're of the same mindset thanks rose uh, david do you want to come back or the only other thing, sorry, was about the um, the national bus strategy and, and to what extent we can implement elements from the plan and scheme. I think, um, if I'm brutally honest, I think that's that's the conversation we have to have back at back at the base. Um, a lot of our bus BSIP was predicated on receiving funding, which we obviously didn't receive any. So I think we're looking at, you know, um, how can we just making sure that we make the best use of the resources we have. So we're working with still continuing, obviously, with the of the partnership working group with the operators. We're looking to start our, um, our um, enhanced partnership board in the next couple of weeks as well so that they can make some of those decision making processes. We've got a new highways manager, so we're looking at, you know, how our, how our budgets can talk to each other more effectively so any junction improvements that we're putting in may uh, will obviously have um, bus improve, bus uh, priority and then obviously the same on active travel as well going forward um, but I think one of the things that we have come to the decision with um, with the with the operators is, is that we need to do more of a marketing campaign because I think the the 
DFT aren't coming forward with that as from my from my understanding. So I think that's something we'll have to take forward ourselves um, as well. But obviously in a background where operators are losing money, losing passages and losing their funding that's coming from government in, in October. So there's also a bit of a, a glum picture there as well that um, prevails here. But we are doing our best with the resources we have available to, to try and turn that around. And that's our priority. Thanks. That, that's very much appreciated. Um, and, and just to pick up the point that uh, Rose made, um, yeah, we're, we're happy to give you um, feedback. So we will be in touch separately and, and perhaps we can arrange a call. Thanks so much. It's really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, can I bring Cathy in, please? Just a quick question, please. Um, any news on Mini Holland bids? I know that there was... Um... <laughs> Don't allow questions. <laughs> Apologies. I won't yes, say quick, there's a quick and easy one to that, isn't there, Christy? There is a quick and easy one. And apologies, we did receive that probably a couple of weeks ago, actually. Yeah, we were we were unsuccessful in our mini Holland bid um, on this occasion. Um, so again, that's another one to take back to the drawing board. And we, we obviously tie that in with the emergency active travel lanes and, and our thinking around that and what we need to do to, to turn that around as well. We'll get. Is, do you mean we'll get feedback on that? Well, we've asked for feedback. We haven't received it. Um, but I, I think I don't. Yeah, I don't okay. think we'll get feedback, Cathy, on Mini Holland. But I, I've actually got three calls set up with some very senior DFT people to ask that exact question. So we, we haven't been offered any. We've okay. asked and haven't received a response. But so we're more proactively now banging on doors and saying we, we need to know. We want to know. What can you tell us? So, and if I can just add something as, as regards. There announcing that information to the people who worked on the Mini Holland bid. Um, how Have you thought about sending out um, anything to them? Because there was a, the pilot group under the old Sustainable Transport Task Force that did a lot of work on that. So, I mean, I could, I could impart the news, but would you prefer it to be you that imparts it? I, th I think we, you're right. It's a good point, um, and we will. We do need to communicate it. I think uh, just to add the comment that um, the the I think from memory the letter we received said that there had been 59 bids across the country and there is only funding for 12. Um, is that right, Christy? Um, I check the figures, but yeah, that seems right to me. Yeah. Um, so. It, um, it's the frustrate it is the frustration, but obviously feedback is going to be constructive. And I know Rose has said already that she's very much onto that. Yeah, but yes. we will we do need to communicate that to that group. If you could do, I think that would be really much appreciated because I don't I I, I saw an email that came out from the Department for Transport very late on Friday night. I should get out more actually. And um the Department for Transport said something about in it about the mini holland schemes and it just named a few authorities but it didn't give a whole list so i didn't i thought i'd, I'd wait and check with you and uh, to see what you knew so if you would that would be much appreciated thanks yeah i think sometimes it's embargoed until the dft announce it isn't it but yeah it's obviously out uh, uh, you know it's there so we do need to communicate that back thanks thanks kathy um uh, is it tony or vanessa it's Vanessa this time, sorry. Kathy stole our question, or one of them. Um, I have a backup question, which is, and again, like you, I need to get out more. I was reading an old Mott McDonald report from 2016 um, where Park and Ride was mentioned. And um, at that time, there was the ambition to open another Park and Ride site on the Hull Road corridor, um, or the Hull Roundabout corridor. Is that still an ambition? It would be subject to a business case, but um, yeah, it's it's not a priority at the moment, given the we yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was, was going to say we we need to get what we've got working before we can mm. even consider alternative yeah. sites, and also this is all tied into the exact point Christy was making earlier about this framework that we need to sit within because we're having some really really interesting conversations at the moment about what our combined vision and ambition is and what the framework is that we what, that we hang ourselves on what's the architecture because then it's not just the removal of eight residential parking spaces to make way for a new development it's actually we're doing this because we're putting in e-bikes a car club and we're creating a, 
you know, a bus corridor here. So therefore we can do this. And it ties into a much bigger strategy, a much bigger ambition and vision where transport's concerned, which is what the LTP gives us. But the whole road is one of those exact, it's like piano moving syndrome. Well, we could do that, but then we'd have to do that. Oh, and then we'd have to do that. And then you come back to the whole road bridge again, which has got all of the infrastructure for, you know, to, to actually change that, to, to make that pedestrian walking, cycling friendly environment. You'd actually have to build an alternative bridge. Where do you get the funding for? Is it a rail project? Is it a regen project? Is it a transport project? So there's this big big conversation that needs to be kind of put into a, a much better formula and it needs to be governed by that framework that we're working towards at the moment so at the moment Vanessa there's nothing off the table but it's certainly not something that's on our list of priorities at the moment we need to get the three sites that we've got open work we need to get Sealand Road back open and yeah. then we can consider what those other points um, on that compass point look like. Thanks Rose. Thank you. Um, can I bring Roy Newton in there please Roy? Brilliant. Thank, thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, it's it's less of a question, more of a couple of comments, really. Um, for me, BSIPs and Mini Hollands are a classic example of DFT having a lot more ambition than they've actually got the money for. Um, and in both cases, both were significantly oversubscribed. Um, only 31 out of 70 authorities that bid for BSIPs actually got funding and you've just heard similar similar figures, in fact even less figures for uh, for Mini Holland. So there's a couple of a couple of things that flow from that. One is we're not we're, we're very well known by local DFT reps but we're not well known by DFT at the centre and I think that's not doing us any favours and I think that's one of the things that Rose has already spotted and is working on to try and improve those relationships so that as an area we are known much more in London, uh, not just locally, because that, that would help significantly. But again, picking up from the presentation I did at the last meeting, a lot of this is also about how, in particular in the short term, during this comprehensive spending review, we can find alternative sources of funding and be less dependent upon these competitive funding, which take an awful lot of time and effort and often give no reward at all. And you think about the the, the the costs of preparing these bits could be better deployed, actually developing schemes, for example. So so just that was just a couple of sort of observations and comments from my perspective. Thanks, Roy. That's um I I, I would echo what you said there. That it, yeah. But 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 again, um I think we, I think we're moving forward positively with 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 the work that we're doing to develop the schemes and what we've heard on the call today. And we just yeah. we, we have to focus on what we can deliver ourselves as much as anything. Um, OK, I'm, I'm really mindful that we've overrun on time. Um, so um, I do want to talk about the, the 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 working groups and we we have had some suggestions um, and we also want to hear from you about suggestions. Rose, do you want me to hand over to you for this part? Is that OK? Yeah. And you can pick up in an email discussion with me as well if we don't get everything sort of um, sold today. But um, in, in terms of so the, the working groups, some of them have been a bit more organic than others. Uh, some have been suggested, some have sort of come about like the, the 20 mile an hour uh, removal on Grosvenor Bridge has generated such a groundswell of conversation and discussion on this that we're setting up those formal working groups. I know that it was put on the agenda without people maybe having been consulted about that being a working group, but it kind of became one um, without it sort of being formally acknowledged. But what we would love to do now, we've got that groundswell of energy and support is to make that a more formal working group going forward as we start to look at the rest of the city and that scalability that I talked about for, for Winsford, for Northwich, for Ellesmere Port, for any of our other towns. So um, the, that was one of the working groups. I think AT Fest, I think we could probably classify that as a, as a working group as well, as well as that workshop, Karen, that you've you've very kindly taken on to, to set up. I think Stephen and Vanessa and others, the AT Fest again will become a discussion point that's scalable. It, it will resonate with AT, with Act to Travel England. It will resonate with the DFT as is doing something really proactive and brilliant in this space. And I think it's something that if we can get that rhythm and, and, and all of those right partners working together, that this is again something that we could continue to deliver maybe in different cities, maybe under different auspices. But um, if we can get a good working group together on that, I think that's got real energy to keep moving forward. Um, the other working group that we'd really like to set up, but this one is slightly um, in terms of um, 
we, we're still working on it a little bit. As you've heard that we got that nil settlement, we have had to come back in house, think about where we want to go with the enhanced partnership, but also how do we relate all of our bus conversations back to the the BRG, so the bus um, the or the bus user group that was set up. That includes park and ride. It includes those new schemes. Vanessa, that you talked about overhaul road. It, it, it includes sort of you know ticketing and fares and and all of that other brilliant stuff that needs to be just needs to be covered might totally take on board your point about wanting to be part of that that wouldn't be something that we did independently we would like to we would like to generate a working group using officers around, uh, sorry using people around the table here from a, a bus perspective we'd also probably like to involve the university in that because we think that they've got huge numbers of people who support the the, the park and ride um, and they're very, very, very keen to make that a success story. We also need to link into the DFT on their national advertising campaign because actually it's all about patronage, isn't it? Actually, I don't think the system's broken, Mike. I actually do think that it's a very, very strong compass point metro that if we didn't have, we'd invent. Um, I, it's all to do with patronage. It's about getting that fear factor down and it's about getting confidence up. So we'd like to create a working group around that. Um, the Northwich Active Travel Scheme that Christy touched on, some of this is, um, um, Tamara, thank you very much. I forgot to actually mention that you were from the university and you were here. I was talking about you rather than allowing you to talk about yourself, but thank you, Tamara. Um, the Northwich Active Travel Scheme, again, in its infancy in the sense that we're just kind of centre checking ourselves against the DFT at the moment. What's the funding for? What have we got the ability to influence? Because it's not actually the consultation, it's actually the money is for the detailed design. Um, uh, but we think that that would be something that people around this group would be brilliantly uh, positioned to support and help us on. They are looking for us to be highly ambitious and look at that kind of London um, the, the the image that Christy put on screen is from uh, one of the London cycle routes. I can't remember which one. It's in the east. It's east. It's part of the East Cable London Street. Cable Street. That's it. So, um, you know, so that they're challenging us, really challenging us. And I think there's a working group. It'd be brilliant to bring people together on that scheme itself. I was going to put Park and Ride as a separate one, but I think it is looped into the BSIP. Um, enhanced partnership the other one and, and mike garrett's on on the call with this and again it's in its infancy but um mike and i have been talking in the background about potentially using chester um as a um, as a sort of a case study for a translation of the na national freight strategy and um again you know mike will if he's still on the call um you know we'll know that it's not something that we've progressed massively, but I think, Mike, the kernels of a of a brilliant set of ideas and a, and a strong kind of idea for a working group is there from a freight perspective. So that would be another one I'd suggest. Um, ah, brilliant. I've got a thumbs up. That's a <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, so, so they're the kind of working groups that we're starting to shape. What I'd love, just like Andy Rayner said, you know, about kind of the the, the speed protection issues that, that we want to um, collaborate with you on. If there's if there are other working groups you think would have merit for this group without sort of spreading us too thinly, if you suggest them directly to me, because I'm going to take this part forward just to give it some sort of cohesion and and, and leadership. Um, but they're the kind of groups that we've got at the moment. In terms of reference, nothing's sort of been drafted for them at the moment. They are more kind of about idea sessions and what we take forward, but we will start to try to verbalise that. Thank you, Nicola. Um, about that, um, giving that some thought. Karen, may I just quickly, without sort of taking us too far away from working groups, I just wanted to say that I'm trying to organise a DFT visit to Chester. I'm trying to organise a group of their really senior people, officer wise, to come and see what we've got, come and see what we're doing, talk about Active Travel Fest, talk about all of that other stuff. We've got Lord McLaughlin, who's the chair of transport for the north he's going to be coming to do a visit that's more sort of with 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 louise gittins as the leader but we'll be able to kind of really push our agenda from a tfm perspective baroness veer has allowed us time in her diary to talk about the bsip output um again louise will be heading that but we've been providing her with lots and lots of comments as to why we're so disappointed but what we want to do going forward and avanti um really good news from an avanti perspective we've been lobbying so hard to get the reinstatement of those direct services from london euston to chester which had gone down to one a day um pre-pandemic and through pandemic in September, we will be restored to fully 14 full uh, 14 direct services a day back to pre-pandemic levels. 
Um, and that's taken enormous amounts of pushing and pushing and letters and um, lobbying and MPs. And by the last account, we had the MD of West Coast Partnerships. We had um, their head of strategic and corporate affairs. We had Avanti's stakeholder lead. And we had two of our MPs as well as Councillor Gittins there. Uh, and they acquiesced to say, yeah, absolutely, this is what's needed to come back in. So sept so May this this week, this timetable week will go down, we'll go up to five direct services, and by September we'll be back to 14. So I, I just sorry, Karen, I know that's not working group related, but just in terms of some of that bigger picture work that's going on in the background that supports everything that we're trying to do as part of this group, I just wanted to try to you know, get us on a bit of a high note and let you know that those Whitehall conversations with the DFT's bus team and everybody else we can get our hands on are happening. Thank you, Rose. Thanks so much. That really is great news and I know how much work went into it. Um, I think everyone's pleased about that. Um, does, does, is it Tony or Vanessa that wants to come in? Got the hand up, Vanessa? It's a historic hand, but I'll okay. take advantage to say, brilliant, well done, that's fantastic. That's really a game changer, I think, isn't it? Yeah, great news on the train service, fantastic, yeah. well done. Well, it was it was a massive group effort, but you know they were using substandard data, saying well they could only go on pat on patronage as it stands at the moment with the crappy bloody changing crew where you go over the footbridge. You know how could you base a service provision on that? So we worked really hard to kind of get businesses behind it and everyone else. So uh, and and remember in Avanti are only the puppets of Treasury and the DFT in this kind of situation, so we had to loop them into. But yeah, it was it was a massive group effort. Could, could I ask on that, Rose? I mean, it's it's, it's massive news. Um, and I think, you know, the impact for some of the stuff that's going on in Chester generally that we've talked about, certainly about promoting Chester as, as a great place to live. Uh, and yeah. these commuter networks are going to be a really important part of that. I mean, how it's a question I've raised in lots of other forums <laughs> talking in. How is this being announced? How are we how are we announcing this message? Because it's massive news. And for people, you know, like Prague, where we want to grow our membership, we want to grow, you know, the, the ability to live and work in the city and commute from the city directly. It's really big news. So yeah. where's the fanfare? Where's the big announcement? What's happening? You know, it's it's we Chester seems to be very poor at announcing these big wins. Yeah, so, I so, know. You know, what do we do? How do we change this? I know. And you might, Garrett, would pop up then as well, because this is something close to your heart as well, isn't it? Um, so this is the... Uh, Karen will, Karen's laughing as well, probably in the background, because we had a, a chat about this the other day. I've said, Vanti, I want us on your landing page. One hour, 58 minutes, direct to set services to Chester 14 times a day. Look at us, you know, come and visit us. And they've agreed um, to have a conversation with me on that. It has to be done in full coordination. Actually, the Vanti website's not that great. Are there other platforms? Nicola's had to leave, but this is something I'd like to pick up with Nicola as well from that marketing perspective. But, but what we left... The call with Tony was when they acquiesced and said right 14 it is you know let's move forward from that it was like right and what we're going to do to promote it who we're going to tell what landing page is is Chester going to be on um I know one hour 58 is too precise but you know under two hours whatever that word and so I've suggested some wording that I'd like to see on their pages and there's a gentleman called Nick Smith who's our stakeholder engagement lead from Avanti's side is going to work with us on that that's great. I mean, we'd really, you know, as part of some of other stuff that we're doing, we'd really love to be able to promote that and share that news as well on other social media platforms and things that we have. Clearly, we don't want to lead it, but we want to be coordinated with what anybody else is doing. So I think it's very important. So I'll get, the, I'll get the timetable change dates to you because I think, you know, fine, Avanti can go and do what they want to do. We'll work as close as we can. But if we collectively do what we think, you know, using Nicola, talking to Roy, all of those other people, if we get the dates that that timetable is going to be reinstated, then we've got something to work back from then. That's great, because we, we've got a workshop on the 24th, which is looking at bringing a whole load of people in the city together about Chester's kind of live, work, play, learn strategy this would just be great news to share at that I mean, it's not yeah. you know it just so that other people are aware of it and they can start spreading the message so if you yeah. can sort of let us know that it's formally happening rose then we can start to share the message which would be yeah great. 
We've also got some really good news from a Chester station perspective as well. So we've met, it's a bit lipstick and rouge, but actually they've agreed to do some quite good changes to the station layout, gate, cycling, accessibility. Uh, John Violet, yes, you're still on the call, aren't you, John? Do you remember many, many months ago we went through that conversation about bins and toilets and indicators and leaking roofs and pigeons? Yeah, so I've been following up on that because the door's still missing on the ladies' toilet. It's really annoying. Um, so I've just said, you know, we you can't keep forgetting about us, what's happening. So they've, because of this big Avanti conversation, they're now they're now propelling that forward. So you'll get train indicating, you, you, you'll get carriage indicators to say what's full and where, to, you know, the gates, accessibility, the cycle parking, John, which obviously you were really... Mm um comprehensive sort of with them on what they need to provide so i'm hoping it's a bit of a chain of events then and then we just need to work on the wayfinding don't we in that whole city gateway angle sorry karen oh my god no, sorry this so is not good. working group related sorry no no it's really good um thanks so much rose and i'm just going to bring mike in now because he's had his hand up patiently and then i think we will have to close because i also have another meeting to get to as well i'm sure everybody else does mike Bye. Fantastic news on that, Rose. Really brilliant. Thank you. Um, to help, you mentioned our profile in London. Um, a, a, a close contact of mine, previous master of my livery company in London, has been appointed to a coordination role for transport for the City of London. He is a, uh, an alderman of the City of London, Shravan Joshi. And again, to give you that link to compare and contrast City of London here, not dissimilar challenges um, and also help with the profile in London. Let me know if it's useful. Mm. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. Thank you, Mike. I will. You're on mute. Yes, yeah, sorry. I sorry. pressed the page, but it didn't work. OK, uh, thanks so much. Um, so I think we agreed that if there were other ideas that that people could contact you directly, Rose. Uh, for, on the working groups. Have we got any other business that people would like to raise? Just if we could be brief, I'd be grateful. I think I'll just say, Karen, that apologies for the lateness of the agenda and the minutes coming out. They was my fault. Yes. They were sat with me and I hadn't seen them. Um, but however, actually, they should have probably been a little bit earlier anyway. So I'll, I were going to work with Sharon and Christy to actually give you the dates to expect things. I will just say in our defence that Sharon, who's on the call, has to subtitle this whole two hour meeting, including all of the ums and the ahs and the everything else. So when that take, can take up to two weeks. And from that, the minutes come, which is why there's that initial delay in what comes out to you but if we timetable when you can expect things at least you've got sort of managed expectations then but um this week was a bit different um because it was sat with me to to approve so apologies yeah we usually aim to get them out at least a week before don't we that's how the council um uh or the meeting agendas sort of operate um just on the dates, though, and I want, did want to raise this because um, the next scheduled meeting is the 27th of July and I'm not going to be able to make that meeting. So we can we can do one of two things. We can um, um, Nicola can chair if she's willing or we can try to move it forward a week or something like that. I'll just be interested in other people's views because I know we're getting into holiday season, so I wouldn't want to push it back. Yeah, move it forward, I think. Mm -hmm. Move it forward. Okay, all right. So, um, well, I'll, I'll I'll follow that up uh, with Sharon, and maybe we can we can get it for the twentieth if every if uh, if that sit, suits everybody's diary. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining today, and um, we've taken away some actions, and our, and Rose and I and others will follow up on those actions. Um, and I'll, I'll be in touch as well, Stephen. Um, it might be a bit later on because I've got another meeting immediately now, but I will get in touch with you today. OK, thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey, do I just stop Hello. recording now? Hello? muted sorry, sorry you we're were just muted. Stopping, i was <laughs> muted we're just closing the meeting down Stephen, so we can stop the recording that's all so oh he's gone so yeah so i just it stop now. it now yeah not gonna lose it am i <laughs> no it should appear in your downloads um it takes a little bit of a while to to appear 
So I've I've stayed on the call for like half an hour, especially when they're evening meetings. Um, but yeah, they do appeal in your downloads, I would say. So do you know what you're doing? No. Um, so so we'll stop it now. Stop recording.